everyone, it's Mr. Thrasher. I couldn't find a video on buoyant force that I liked enough on YouTube, so I decided to make my own. Here we're learning about the physics of how to float. And if you want to float, you better know buoyant force. To start off, I have a scenario. Here we have a cute little dog. It's sitting on the ground. And even if you don't know a whole lot about forces, I'm guessing that you've heard of the term weight. Weight is a force and it comes from the earth pulling you down. Weight is acting on you and this dog and everything around you. But I have a question. If there's this downward force of weight acting on the dog, why isn't the dog like crashing through the ground, falling through the earth into the center of our earth's core and being melted within our iron magma chamber? Oh, well, maybe you're thinking there's another force acting up, and that's absolutely right. The dog is on the ground, right? You're sitting in your chair. Yeah, there's weight acting on you, but on surfaces, and from surfaces, there's something known as a support force, or sometimes called the normal force. For the dog, this support force from the ground is balancing their weight. The support force from your chair is balancing your weight. That's why we're not crashing through things. These two forces are balanced. They're even. And if they're even, you're not going to like start falling downward or start accelerating upwards. Woo, good. Well, let's take that now to water. Let's say we have Mr. Duck, and Mr. Duck is sitting on the water. Does the duck still have a weight force? Absolutely. There's still a downward pull from gravity. Otherwise, the duck would just be floating around in the air. But the duck doesn't sink to the bottom. Well, why not? There has to be another force acting upwards also. That's the only way. The only way to not be falling downwards is if you have some kind of balancing force. And in liquids and in fluids, we call that the buoyant force. The buoyant force is like the support force, but that's what we use and that's what we call forces acting upwards from fluids like water, like liquids. So let's figure out what this buoyant force is based on. It's an upward force from objects in fluids. And it has to do with like the pressure from the fluids, the little water molecules that are colliding with the objects. They apply a pressure, they apply a force. And based on that pressure, it's always an upwards force. And how strong that force is, it comes from how much water is being displaced. That's a fancy word for being pushed out of the way. So here I have kind of a tub of water, a beaker of water, and let's imagine I have this orange ball, and I have it placed a little bit in the water. Notice how it's a little in the water? Well, when I lower the ball in the water, it displaces, it pushes some of the water away, right? You can't have water and ball in the same spot. So when you push a ball down, some of the water has to get pushed away. This is exerting a pressure on the water, a force on the water, and therefore that causes an upward force on the ball. That's what we're calling the buoyant force. Now, let's imagine I lowered the ball even more, or I pushed the ball even more. So notice the ball's even lower. All right, that means I'm pushing more water out of the way. And sometimes like when you're pushing a lot of water out of the way, it kind of rises up on the container, so the water level has kind of gone up. But what's crucial is if I'm pushing more water out of the way, the buoyant force gets bigger. Notice this arrow is bigger. More water being displaced, more buoyant force. Oh man, now I've shoved the ball totally under the water. I'm displacing a lot of water. And therefore, if I'm pushing even more water out of the way, there's an even bigger buoyant force. And if you've ever been in a swimming pool, if you've taken like a, a ball, maybe a basketball or soccer ball, if you've ever like pushed it under the water and then you let it go, the ball shoots out. That's because when you push it under the water, there's a huge buoyant force because you've moved a lot of water out of the way. So this upward force, it comes from how much water is being displaced or being pushed out of the way. So if you want to float, you need to, again, balance your weight. And you can do that by pushing enough water out of the way. So here's an example. And you could actually do this at home. Imagine I have like a ball of Play-Doh, a ball of clay. Well, you know, the Play-Doh has a certain weight. That's what I have here in red. But in a ball shape, yeah, it displaces some water. So there is a buoyant force. But that water being displaced, that buoyant force isn't enough to balance the weight. So here the weight is stronger, so the clay sinks down until maybe it hits the bottom of the, the pool or the container. If I take that same ball of clay, the same amount, and I change its shape, 
If I change its shape into something like this, it's still the same weight, but now the shape means it's going to push, it's going to displace more water. Displacing more water means more buoyant force. And if these two things are balanced, now it's going to float. Remember, you stop moving if you're balancing those two forces like the dog. Oh, so you need to displace enough water to balance your weight. So boats, if you think of like why boats float, it's not really because they're light. That's not always true. If you've ever imagined or you've seen these pictures of these giant tanker uh, vessels that are thousands of tons and they're made out of steel, they weigh a huge amount, but they're designed to push water out of the way. That way you have a large enough buoyant force to balance your weight. And what happens if maybe a boat springs a leak? Well, if water starts filling in the bottom of the boat here, you're no longer displacing that water. So if there's a hole in the boat, if it's being filled with water, that's not being displaced. Less displaced water, less buoyant force. Oh, you might have some sinking. So buoyant force. Oh, man. That's the key if you want to stay afloat and you need to be able to push enough water out of the way in order to create a strong enough buoyant force to balance your weight. And that's how it's going to stop you from sinking. Thanks for watching this video.